Shalom, uh-uh. shalom. Giving all praises and honor and glory is due to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahshua, Hashem, Rakhadash. That belongs to the elders and the apostles of Great Moonstone, Tabernacle, Truth, and Double Side Test, Tally, Akim. You men that are prophesying the name throughout the four ones is earth, person, and truth, without righteousness and sincerity. Shall I want to you, brothers? And to the Aqua that are listening, or into you, I say, Shall I want? <clears throat> Coming back at you in another quick lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahshua. Sorry about the background and the noise. I cut and had to cut down the TV. I forgot to cut it down, so it's so lucky about that. But nevertheless, let's get started with the lesson, man. All right, so we should be inquiring how we always talk about how, you know, two thirds are going to be destroyed and, you know, on this side. But we should be inquiring how the righteous going to be saved, man, because, hey, how the righteous is going to be saved. It's going to be the great deliverance, you know, since, you know, ancient Egypt, when we came out of Egypt, man. So. That, you know, the new Egypt, okay? The new Egypt is, you know, which is symbolic to Babylon, the great America. That's what a great deliverance is going to come out of, which is Babylon, the great America. So without further ado, let's get into this lesson. and go when this lesson be edifying. All right, and the first scripture I want to go to is... Let me start here. <clears throat> this is Revelation chapter 11 and verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, was saying to them, who's them? The elect come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, which is the chariots and their enemies beheld them. So, hey, the great deliverance and everybody's going to witness our deliverance, man. All right. Without further, let's prove that. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter five and verse one, because, hey, that great deliverance is coming, man. And it's coming. You know, it's coming fast, man, because, hey. The days are being sped up for the elect's sake, okay? This is Wisdom of, Sol- Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, and verse 1. It says, Then shall the righteous man, who's a righteous man, the elect, the Israelites, the Israelite man that's preaching, they're preaching his word, all right? Righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such has afflicted him and made no account of his labors. And these nations made no account of our labor, especially Esau, even the so-called white man. Okay, they may know count of our laborers, man. Okay, verse two. When they see it, they should be terrible. They should be troubled with terrible fear. And these nations are in fear right now. Why? Because of the great awakening. Our people are waking up. Okay, our people are waking up to the truth. They're coming back to the heritage. And these nations, these heathen and Gentile nations, they are terrified, man. They're scared. And as a matter of fact, let's go. Let's go back. To Revelation, go back to Revelations chapter eleven, and I'm, let me start at verse eleven. It says, "And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them, and they stood upon their feet." And that's what the men of the Lord are doing right now. We're standing up on our feet and telling our enemies that hey, they're going into captivity, especially the so-called white man Esau Edom. All right, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And fear is falling upon the heathen and Gentile nations, man. Why? Because they're scared. All right. Especially Esau Edom, man. That's why he's trying to hurry up. You know, that's why he's labeling us a hate group. He's labeling us, you know, taking down lessons, taking down videos, of revealing in this damn devil, man. Revealing his uh, New World Order plans. And he don't like it. Okay. So these devils, they're terrified, man. Okay. They see us exposing them. Then we're coming back to our heritage. Oh, man, that's really scary to them. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, and I'm going to read verse 2 again. When they see it, they should be ter- They should be troubled with terrible fear and shall see the scr- amaze, amaze, sorry, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. And, hey, the nations, all the nations are going to see our salvation, man. When those chariots flood the sky, flood the sky, all right, hey, all our enemies are going to behold us, man, okay? They're going to see it. And the whole world is going to see it, okay? Which proves that that whole rapture doctrine, you know, nobody's going to see this, you know, you know, how the, well, how the hell that shit goes, you know, how Christian, you know, teaches, which is straight up confusion anyway. But hey, the whole world is going to witness the salvation of the he, of the uh, the elect, of Israel, the Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. Okay, starting with the elect, man. We all know two-thirds are going to die on this side, but 
This is a lesson about talking about how the elect are going to be saved and delivered. Okay. Uh, verse three. And and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves. This was he who we had sometime in some sometimes in derision and a and a prop and a proverb of reproach. Hey, that's how these nations are going to be, man. OK, they're going to be like this guy, this guy. Let's read on, man. Verse four. We fools account his light madness and his end to be without honor. And that's how these nations see us, man. They see the men out on the highways and byways preaching. OK, they see us out there preaching. It's true. They're like, Psh, yeah, look, these guys are crazy, man. These are some mad men. You know, we're telling that, hey, that, you know, this, uh, you know, Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. We're telling that the Edomites and the other heathen nations are going into slavery. They look at us like we're crazy. Okay. We're telling that Babylon is going to be destroyed. Okay. The kingdom of heaven is going to be ruled on earth, starting with King Yahushai and King David and the 12 apostles and 144,000. Okay. So, hey, yeah, they do look at us as being madmen. They, let me read this again. Verse 4. We fools are counting his light madness. And his end to be without honor. They don't think our end is going to be without honor. But hey, pretty soon, yeah, they're going to see it, man. All right. Verse 5. How is he numbered among the children of Yahweh? And his lot is among the saints. All right. So, hey, all these nations are going <laughs> to, they're going to be like, dang, man. Wow. These guys. Yeah. The guys you mock, you scoff, you laugh at, try to come up against, try to label us a hate group. Label us, you know, saying that we're hateful and all that. No, you you going to witness it. And real soon, the whole world's going to see it, man. Okay? Hey, you people going to be like, damn. <laughs> okay? Uh, let's see. Verse 6. Therefore, we have erred from the way of the truth, and the light of righteousness has not shined unto us, and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. And that's how you heathen nations are going to be, man. Okay, let's go back to Revelations chapter 11 and verse 12. And let's read this again. And they and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And we're going to hear that voice in the Hebrew tongue. Okay, come up hither. All right. And they ascended, the elect ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. All of our enemies are going to be held. Them. Let's get further. Proof on that. Let's go to Revelations chapter 18, verse 4. All right. Revelations 18, 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. It's talking about the elect being delivered in the chariots, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Okay. So, hey, before the destruction comes, hey, we're going to barely get out of here, man. We're going to scarcely be saved. All right. Let's get that. Listen. Um, <clears throat> First Peter 4. And 18. Um, let's see. Um, I'll start verse 17. First Peter 4. 17. The time, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? So hey, the judgment is going to begin at the house of uh, at the house of Israel, man. Okay, the ones that are in the truth and ones that are not in the truth. Okay, and like I said, it begin at us. What's what's going? What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? Okay. Verse 18, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, we're going to scarcely be saved out of here. All right, we're going to barely get out of here. Where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? Okay, all right. Let's see, let's go here. <clears throat> this is Isaiah chapter 31 and verse 5. As birds flying, it's talking about the cherries, so will the Lord have our Shiao Shai of hosts defend Jerusalem. All right, Jerusalem is a people before a place. Defending also, he will deliver it. And passing over, he will preserve it. So the Lord Yahweh is going to deliver the elect, man. Okay, but at the same time, 
hey, he's going to destroy two-thirds of our people, all right? He's going to destroy Babylon, the great America, okay? Let's get this. Isaiah 19 and verse 20. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord Yahweh Shem Shaf host. In the land of Egypt, which is similar to America, for they shall cry unto the Lord Yahweh Shem Shaf because of the oppressor. And who's crying? All right, to the Lord Yahweh Shem Shaf. The elect. The elect men are crying out, man. Okay? And as a matter of fact, let me, let me read this first, and then I got a scripture in my head. This one just popped up, one of my favorite ones. Okay? Because of the oppressors. And who's the oppressors? The heathen, these heathen and Gentile nations, including Esau Edom. Okay? Esau Edom is our oppressor. And he shall send them a savior. Who's the savior, man? All right? For all you people out there that say that Yahweh Shai is not in the Old Testament. All right? Hey, you're wrong. Okay? Let's read this. And he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Who is this talking about, man? Yahweh Shai. Okay? Yahweh Shai is our redeemer. Okay? Let's go to Luke 18, verse 7 and 8. And, it, and shall not Yahweh avenge his own elect which cried dead night unto him, though he bear along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. The Lord Yahweh Shem Shah is going to avenge his elect speedily, man. Okay, because like it says in Isaiah 59 verse 19, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord Yahweh Shem Shah is going to give up a standard against him. Okay, I'm going to get that. All right. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, which is Yahweh Shai, shall he find faith on earth? And he's going to find faith on earth through his elect. Okay. Let's get that since I read, mention it. All right. <clears throat> so shall they fear the name of the Lord Yahweh Shem Shai from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord Yahweh Shem Shai shall lift up a standard against them. So the Lord uh, standard is going to be lifted up for the elect man, for some of the elect men. All right. Spiritual powers to overcome the enemies. Okay. Verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. Who's the Redeemer? Yahweh Shai. Okay. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord Yahweh Shai. And I got another one. Uh, let's see. I think it's Isaiah 33, verse 22. I believe. Yeah. Con. Huh? Isaiah 33, verse 22. For the Lord Yahweh Shem Shai is our judge. The Lord Yahweh Shem Shai is our lawgiver. The Lord Yahweh Shem Shai is our king. He will save us. See? So the Lord Yahweh Shem Shai is going to save the elect. Okay? There you go, man. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's get this. This is. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'm starting verse 16. For the Lord, Yahweh Shai himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, which is Michael, Michael Island, and with the trump of Yahweh. And the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. So the ones who are going to die as martyrs, they're going to be raised up first. Watch this. Then which, then which we are alive and remaining because you're going to have some of the elect that are going to be alive and remaining. Let's prove that. Let's go to Mark because it says in Mark 9 1 that some of the elect are not going to see death. All right, let's read it. Mark chapter 9, verse 1. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them, some of the elect, that stand here which shall not taste the death. Till they have seen the kingdom of Yahweh come with power. See? So some of the elect are not going to see death at all. Okay? All right. You're going to have some of the elect men that are going to die as martyrs. But some of the elect are not going to see death at all. All right. Let's go back to verse 17. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17 again. Then we which are alive and remaining shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. See? So... The rest of the elect that are alive and remaining are going to be caught up together with, with the rest of the elect in the chariots. Okay, those are the what that's what the clouds represents chariots. Okay, 
Not an actual cloud, man. Okay? There's going to be cherries, so-called UFOs. What would you prefer to as so-called UFOs? Okay? Those are the vehicles of salvation for the elect. Okay? And that's how Yahusha is going to come, man. All right? Same way Yahusha left in a, in a cherry. He's coming back that way. And you know what? Got to get it. <laughs> hey, scripture popping up. It's Acts chapter 1 and verse... Yeah. Verse 10. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Uh... Yeah, no, verse 9, Snocky. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. And when he has spake, and when he has spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. This is Yahweh Shai. Okay, Yahweh Shai was taken up in a chariot and was received out of the him and received him out of their sight. Alright. Verse 10. While they looked steadfastly towards heaven as they went up, behold. Two men stood by them in white apparel. Those are angels. Okay. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This saying, Yahushai, which is taken up from you into heaven. Because he was just like it said in verse 9. He was taken up in a cloud. He was taken up in a chariot. Okay. All right. A chariot received him. All right. Uh, let's see. Let me read this again. Verse 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This saying, Yahushai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall also sluggy, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So, the same way Yahushai left in the chariot, he's coming back in the chariot. He's going to be in the big chariot, man. All right. Second Israel's the 13th chapter, describe him coming as a a chariot that's described like a big, huge mountain range, okay? All right, Prophet Israel didn't know where it began or where it ends, so it's going to be huge, all right? And you ever seen the movie Independence Day, all right, where that, that so-called UFO enter into the atmosphere and enter to the Earth's atmosphere? That's the same way, man, okay? So, hey, all right? What was that? Uh, what was that? I think I was in First Thessalonians. Yeah, let's go back to it. First Thessalonians chapter four. All right. Um. Yeah, I was here. Let's read this. Then which we are alive and remaining shall be, be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord Yahweh in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord Yahweh in Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, and that's what we do. All right, that's what the man of the Lord do. We comfort you with these words, okay? All right, so we ain't got nothing to worry about, man, okay? Let's read this. This is Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord Yahweh Shai, that it shall no more be said, the Lord Yahweh Shai liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, okay? We're still going to talk about, you know, how we was delivered out of ancient Egypt. But the new Egypt is going to be, psh, man, the new Egypt, the new deliver, the deliverance out of the new Egypt, which is symbolic to Babylon, the great America, is going to be the, it's going to be the talk in the kingdom. Okay. Verse 15. But the Lord Yahweh Shai that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. Where is that? North America. Okay. Babylon, the great. And from all the lands, whether he had driven it, all right? The other parts of the world, whether the elect is scattered, all right? The Israelite foreigners, okay? Because we were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. But the big, deli but the big deliverance is going to come out of Babylon, the great America, okay? And I will bring them again into their own, it's like into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So, there we go. So the Lord Yahweh about Shia Shah is gonna put us back in our own land, okay? Which proves that the people in that over there in the land are not the people of the Lord, man. Because, you know, <laughs> how did they get the land? By a piece of paper. The Belfort Declaration, the nineteen forty eighters. So that proves that this prophecy has not happened yet. Okay? This is Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. All right, this is talking about Yahushua. 
And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, the chariots of heaven with power and great glory. Okay, so the Lord Yahweh is coming with the host of angels in the clouds, well, in the chariots, I'm trying to say. Well, you can describe them as clouds too, but they're chariots, all right? They're not literal clouds, they're chariots, man. So-called UFOs, all right? Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. That's the host of angels in those chariots. And they shall gather together his elect. See, the elect is going to be saved first. Okay? The 144,000 and one-third of elect. All right? We already know how two-thirds are going to do. Two-thirds are going to perish on this side. All right? Like it says in uh, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. All right? Uh, let's see. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay? So that's how the elect are going to be saved. All right? Yahweh is going to send his angels. All right? And let's get that. Let's prove that. All right? I think it's Psalm 68 and verse 17. Yeah. Psalm 68 and verse 17. The chariots of Yahweh are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is in, is among them as in Sinai and the holy place. See? Okay? So the chariots of the Lord Yahweh are 20,000, even thousands of angels. All right? There's another one. I think it's in Jude 1 and C. Yeah, this is Jude 1 and 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the glory of Hashem come with 10,000 of his saints. All right, to do what? 10,000 of his saints, man. Those are those angels in his chariots. To do what? To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Okay? So the Lord Yahweh Shion Shah is coming to do some major killing, man. Okay? And you know who that's proving. Let's go to Isaiah 66. All right? Isaiah 66 and verse 15. Let's prove that. For behold, the Lord Yahweh shall come with fire and his chair and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire, man. So the Lord Yahweh shall is coming with fire, like it says in uh, Luke twelve and forty nine. I come to send fire on the earth, and what would I be if it be already kindled? Okay, verse sixteen. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord Yahweh shall plead with all flesh. Lead means to judge, and the slaying of the Lord Yahweh shall be many. So the slaying of the Lord Yahweh is going to be many. All right. Okay. Let's get this. This is uh, Second Israel chapter eight and verse one. And he answered me saying, "The Most High Yahweh have made this world for many, but the world to come for a few." See. So hey, the world is to come is for few, man. All right. Uh, let's read the, I'm going to read on down to verse 3. I will tell thee a similar to Israel's, as when thou asked the earth, asked the earth, it shall say unto thee, that it giveth much mold, there whereof earthen vessels are made, but the little dust that goldeth cometh of, even so is the course of this present world. See? So he's basically telling Prophet Israel, hey, this world was made for many, but the world to come is for few. And it's going to go on to say that. Verse 3. There be many created, but few shall be saved. See? Only a few. A remnant. The remnant of Israel is going to be saved. All right? And the rest that do survive, you know, what's coming, the, the, this coming destruction, what the, what's going to happen in the heathen and Gentile nation that are going to survive this? They're going to be 
they're going to be salvaged for slavery. All right. They're going to go straight into slavery. Slavery. OK. They're going to go straight into slavery. OK. Because you're going to have some heathen nations that are going to survive. You're going to have some Edomites that are going to survive this up and coming destruction. All right. The, the elites. All right. The elites are going to be, you know, they're going to survive because they got their doomsday bunkers ready. All right. They ready to go into those doomsday bunkers when all hell breaks loose. All right, the low level Edomites, they're going to be destroyed on this side. They're going to die by thermonuclear fire. But hey, they're going to come back to the laws of the elites. All right, and they're going to serve out their thousand years in captivity. Okay, that says the scripture, along with the other heathen nations. Okay, that's scripture. All right, 2nd Israel chapter 9 and verse 13. And therefore be not curious. How the ungodly shall be punished, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. See, and that's what we're supposed to be. We won't supposed to be how carry. Although we tell, you know, although we're supposed to warn the unrighteous and the ungodly who are our people, we're supposed to warn our people, all right, basically. All right, you Israelites, that's who the, this warning is for, and this is who this, uh, these lessons are for. You Israelites, man, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans to get you to repent. Because like I say, repentance is only for the Israelites. Repentance is not for the other nations. Okay? So, this is for you, basically. And we already know two-thirds are not going to repent. So, hey, we're not we're not curious of how they're going to die. But then, like it says, but it says, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Whose world is and for whom the world is created. See, the world was created for our sakes, man. Okay, verse 14. Then answer I and said, I have said before and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter. That there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. So you're going to have a lot. You're going to have a lot of Israelites that are going to perish. But only a remnant is going to be saved. 144,000, one third remnant, okay, are going to be saved, okay? So, hey, this fits perfectly with what we just read. Verse uh, 3 For maybe there be many created, but few shall be saved. And who's the few? The remnant, the remnant of Israel, man. All right, so we're not curious. So, like it says, be not curious of how the ungodly shall be punished. And when, okay, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, all right? Although we do supposed to warn, hey, the ungodly, which is our people, you Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, okay, we're supposed to warn you, hey, if you don't repent, you're going to die, all right? But we're supposed to also inquire how the righteous going to be saved as well, okay? Uh, let's see, anything else? Mm, that's pretty much it. That's all I had. All right. This is, I just want to do this little quick lesson. All right. So, Lord, when I praise the lesson was edifying. Call him like you like you. How about you? How about you? Rekaka Dodge, double honors to the elders and apostles of great wisdom. Tell me his truth and double side taste. Tell you, Akim, you men that are prophesying the name throughout the form, which is earth, pushing the truth without righteousness and sincerity. All right. So, on to the next video. To the next time, I say, Shalom. Shalom, Barak, down to the whole for the neck. And why Baba Ball destruction to this wicked ass kingdom? Show on.